Hey folks, today I'm going to be profiling a very modern character. So modern, they've only been around for less than a year or so at this point, and their character and story are still continuing to evolve and unravel as we speak. I'm going to be talking about Surge the Tenric, a villain created by the good folks behind the ongoing Sonic the Hedgehog comic book put out by IDW. Even though I'm in the UK, I'm able to get my hands on them at my local comic book store, and I'm loving what the team at IDW are doing. I think the IDW run has been fantastic since its first issue back in 2018, and it's obvious that the writers and artists have a lot of passion for the source material. I'm actually pretty excited to talk about an IDW character for the first time, especially Surge, because she's made a huge splash among Sonic fans in the short time she's been around. Before we get going, I urge everyone to go out and get collecting the IDW comics. They are really fantastic and I'm looking forward to reading upcoming issues. This video offers a summary of a couple of storylines, but it's not a replacement for really getting stuck into the comics. Also, if you like the look of the gameplay here, find the Surge for Sonic Adventure 2 mod by Sean Guku on Game Banana. There's a link in the description. Okay. Let's get going with Surge's background. Surge was originally revealed to the internet as Sonic's future foe in the summer of 2021. Her look immediately piqued a lot of people's interest. So distinct and eye-catching. The truth is that Surge, along with her partner in crime, Kitsunane the Fennec, also announced in the summer of 21, and another villain called Dr. Starline, were originally pitched as a trio of villains by Ian Flynn back in 2017, before the first issue of the IDW comic book was even published. Apparently, the plan back then was to have Surge be a fellow hedgehog, but her species was changed to Tenric in the years between the pitch and her reveal, apparently at the behest of Sega. Surge and Kit were basically put on the back burner at the time, as they were deemed not ready to debut in the comic books yet. Fast forward to 2021, and the world was finally ready for them. Artists Evan Stanley and Mauro Fonseca would flesh out Surge's design. Her upright hair would be inspired by Sango Morimoto's old Amy Rose design from the 1990s manga series. Her overall look and attitude would also be inspired by Android 18 from Dragon Ball Z. Overall, though, a lot of fans couldn't help but assume that Surge was IDW's answer to Scourge the Hedgehog. Who? Well, let's go back in time. In the 11th issue of the old Archie Sonic the Hedgehog comic book, Sonic battled his evil counterpart Anti-Sonic from Anti-Mobius, a sunglasses and leather jacket clad Sonic created by Archie's most infamous writer, Ken Penders. Anti-Sonic reappeared a handful of times but in issue 160 from 2006, he was given a new look and a new name, rechristened Scourge with cool green fur. Scourge would go on to be one of Archie Comics' real fan favourites and one of their most popular and prolific villains. The thing is, Archie kind of messed up at some point and lost the contracts for some of their writing talents, effectively resulting in a bunch of Archie writers gaining sole ownership of any characters they created. That means that Penders owns Scourge, so the chances of us ever getting to see him again in official Sonic media are slim to none. If you're interested in delving into this topic further, check out the Thanks Ken Penders blog on Tumblr. It's an amazing resource that talks about Ken Penders and his legal battles with Archie and Sega. So anyway, when Surge was announced, I saw quite a few people suggesting that she was IDW's answer to Scourge. I mean, yeah, she's green and a kind of evil version of Sonic, but the ultimate truth is that both Scourge and Surge have an older inspiration. Ashura the Hedgehog, a green and black glitched version of Sonic from 1992's Sonic the Hedgehog 2. In the 90s, Ashura was a bit of a cult favourite character online, shrouded in mystery. It's been admitted by writers that both Scourge and Surge are directly inspired by the Ashura the Hedgehog glitch. 
which is awesome. For more information on Ashura, I made a whole video on him, so check that out if you've not already. The fact is, the entire trio of villains that Ian Flynn envisioned were all inspired by glitches. Surge by Ashura, Dr. Starline by Wechnia, who is also known as Starline by the way, a glitchy character from Knuckles Chaotix, and Kitsuname by a Tails glitch that Flynn personally remembers. Now, let's get into looking at how Surge's first year as a villain in the IDW comics has been. Surge and her partner in crime, Kitsuname, first appeared briefly in issue 46. In the previous issue, Amy and a gang of her buddies, including the friendly wooden badnik Belle, take a trip to the Forest Ridge Zone campsite to see some nature. In the dead of night, while the other girls are asleep, Belle goes for a nervous wander with her flashlight and finds herself being jumped by a rogue motorbug, causing her to crash to the ground and shut down. Her flashlight seemingly sets the zone ablaze, causing a horrendous forest fire. In issue 46, Belle comes to her senses and sees the silhouette of two mysterious figures who suddenly disappear. The motorbug, it turns out, is actually another friendly badnik who helps Belle put out the fire burning through her wooden shell. Belle teams up with the motorbug and with Tangle to look for others in danger. They end up finding the park ranger's kid who tells them about a mysterious duo who he says were the ones responsible for starting this wildfire. The story concludes in issue 47. Bell, Tangle, and the motorbug reunite the young kiddo with his dad and rejoin Amy. The ladies decide to build a dam, blocking a stream that runs through the park. They let the pressure behind the dam build and then, with one smack from Amy's Pico Pico hammer, unleash the water to soak the ground around the campsite, curbing the spread of the fire. The story ends rather ominously with Amy reunited with Sonic and Co, joking that the fire was just a fluke, a bit of bad luck. Probably not, as the park ranger stumbles upon a split crackling tree and some strange looking footprints in the aftermath of the blaze. Whose are they? Who are the mysterious figures that Belle and the kids saw? Why did they start the wildfire? Let's find out. After this cliffhanger debut, Surge and Kit next starred in their own four-part miniseries titled Imposter Syndrome, which released between regular installments of the IDW comic. Let's talk about Imposter Syndrome issue one. It starts with Dr. Starline, who actually debuted way before Surge and Kit, effectively as IDW's answer to Snively or Grimer. Starline is a highly intelligent and devious former accolade of Eggman, in a way, he was Eggman's biggest fan, before feeling a sense of betrayal when Eggman teamed up with Sonic to take care of a greater evil, causing Starline to go off-piste and form his own plans. The first couple of pages of Imposter Syndrome number one have Dr. Starline outlining his devious plan. He's going to replace Dr. Eggman as the world's premier bad guy and replace the world's fawned-over heroes, Sonic and Tails, with heroes of his own creation that he has control over. Starline is sick to death of the back and forth of Eggman and Sonic and the inevitability of Sonic always getting the upper hand. His hope is that by taking out Eggman and Sonic and controlling both sides of the hero-villain dynamic going forward, Starline will be able to shape the world in his own image while wowing the populace with the theatrics that they're used to seeing. The replacement for Sonic, Surge the Tenric, possessing not just Sonic's speed, but also his cocky attitude and pizzazz too. Unlike Sonic, Surge is on the proverbial leash and under the control of Starline. The hot-headed, electricity-spewing Surge has been paired with Starline's Tails counterpart, Kitsuname the Fennec. He's incredibly shy, very subservient to Surge, but he's more level-headed and capable of using water as a deadly weapon. You might ask yourself, hang on, what is a Tenric exactly? It's a type of African mammal that resembles a hedgehog, but in reality has no relation. That's quite a fitting animal for Sonic's imposter rival. Imposter syndrome starts with Surge and Kit tearing through a training course and Surge angrily demanding Starline let her loose 
to cause some mayhem in the real world. Starline calms Surge down with his hypnoglove, briefly paralyzing her and giving her a bout of short-term memory loss. It's a necessity to control the volatile Tenric. When Surge regains consciousness, Dr. Starline assigns her her first task, starting a blaze in Forest Ridge campsite, intended to eliminate Amy and other Sonic allies. It was their first real-world mission, and their second is to stealthily sow a little chaos in Central City, which they gleefully do, while Starline attempts and fails to break into Tails' house, paranoid that Tails might be able to work out that Starline is planning something big based on some of his past actions. Back at Starline's base, Surge's impatience shows again as she fiends over the idea of fighting Sonic as soon as possible. But then something interesting happens. Surge suddenly questions her desire to pummel Sonic. Is that what she really wants? Before she has time to question her motives further, Starline uses his Hypnoglove once more to put Surge and Kit to sleep. After Imposter Syndrome 1, I think it's fair to say, Surge's design is top-notch, and the artist did an amazing job making her so expressive in every panel. She has a hot-headed, impatient, and quite rude personality, but she kind of reminds me of jerk-ass Fleetway Sonic in all honesty, I like it. In Imposter Syndrome 2, Starline wants to finish up one more mission before letting Surge loose on Sonic. He wants to infiltrate one of Eggman's bases, to take control of its Badnik legions. He determines to infiltrate the base's Western Control Tower while tasking Surge and Kit with ensuring that no one uses the Eastern Comms Tower to alert Eggman of the break-in. Surge almost instantly goes off-piste. In a violent fury, she declares war on Eggman's Badniks. One particularly large robot gives her some trouble, leading to a little self-doubt. The big bot utterly smashes Surge, and the usually reserved Kit totally loses his cool for the first time, unleashing on the robot to save his comrade. Despite the hijinks, Starline's infiltration plan was a success, and he's able to hack into Eggman's Eggneck network to make the base's badniks subservient to him. As the story ends, Surge and Kit find a quiet corner to talk. Surge is getting suspicious of Starline and can't quite add up exactly what the Doctor did to her and Kit, and why. She resolves to find out. If we check back in with the main comic just for one second, remember that little bit of chaos that Surge caused in Central City? Well, the Chaotix Detective Agency have heard about it and head over to the city to investigate. Unfortunately, they end up on an unrelated wild goose chase and get mixed up with another group of villains, but based on their cork board, at the end of the issue, they're at least vaguely aware of Surge and Kit. Anyway, at the start of Imposter Syndrome 3, we find Surge and Kit hacking into Starline's computer and getting some insight into their background. They find a video of Starline explaining that rather than robots powered by animals, i.e. badniks, robotniks modus operandi, they're actually animals, seemingly powered by something artificial, so they're cyborgs of a kind. There's more videos too, evidence of Starline admitting that he controls them with a hypnotic device. There's also hundreds of hypnotherapy sessions, showing Starline drilling a hatred of Sonic into Surge. Surge wants Kit to dig even deeper and try and find some evidence of who they were prior to all of this experimentation. She ponders whether she was a volunteer, whether she was kidnapped, whether she was a criminal. It's just then, that Starline walks in and calmly tries to subdue the pair with his Hypnoglove again. This time, things go awry. Surge and Kit launch an assault on Starline and manage to bring him down and use his own Hypnoglove on him. With Starline temporarily knocked out, the duo formulate their own plan. They'll continue on and defeat Sonic and Eggman as planned, but then they'll turn on Starline once the plan is complete to forge their own destiny. When Starline comes to, they gaslight him into believing they're still on board with the original plan, and that ends the issue. Checking back in with the main comic in issue 49, something weird happens. All of the world's badniks, including Bell and the friendly motorbug, suddenly go into zombie mode, lurching towards Eggman's Eggperial City, compelling Sonic and Tails to follow to see what's going on. 
By the way, quick aside, rather awesomely, this issue features a Sonic the Comic reference. There's an Echidna Guardian robot in the background of one panel. Neat. The IDW comics are packed with fun little Easter eggs like this. Imposter Syndrome 4 is where things start getting spicy. Starline is ready to launch a substantial attack on the Imperial City. He releases Surge and Kit on the hordes of badniks protecting the city, and Eggman, when alerted of the threat via security footage, gets his first look at these curious imposters. Eggman unleashes one of his greatest weapons to protect the complex, Metal Sonic. Metal poses a good challenge, but by combining their powers of water and electricity, Surge and Kit fry and deactivate him. With Metal defeated, Starline hacks into Eggnet, mocks Dr. Eggman in his own control room, and executes the Badnik override program, triggering all Badniks to march their way towards the Metropolis. Starline correctly predicts that this mass migration of Badniks will pique Sonic's interest and also lure him there. As we saw in issue 49, that is the case. As for Eggman, he makes a quick escape during the takeover. The issue ends with Surge and Kit reiterating their plan. They're ready to destroy Sonic, Eggman, Starline, and every hero and villain that's ever been aligned with any of them. That wraps up the Imposter Syndrome miniseries. Now, with the Bumper Edition issue 50, we're ready for Surge and Kit to properly debut in the comic's main run. Let's go. Just as Sonic, Tails, and Bell reach the Eggperial City, Eggman himself reappears in a gigantic mech suit, ready to take his empire back from Dr. Starline. Bell finds a half-destroyed Metal Sonic lying on the ground. She vows to fix him up and follow him so that she can confront Dr. Eggman. In the meantime, Sonic and Tails go off themselves. That's when we get what we've been waiting for for months and what the comic has patiently built up to. Surge attacks Sonic while Kit deals with Tails. After an initial attack, Surge is barely able to control herself. Sonic cockily introduces himself, but Surge is trying desperately to hold back tears. She goes off on Sonic effectively blaming him for her creation, saying that if he dealt with Eggman or Starline in the past, she wouldn't have been created as this vessel of hate. Issue 50 basically keeps jumping between the fight between Eggman and Starline, now both in mecha suits, Belle trying to resurrect Metal Sonic, Tails clashing with Kit, and of course the Sonic Surge showdown. After all of the build-up, things don't go to plan for Surge and company. Eggman defeats Starline fairly easily by outsmarting him, and Starline is seemingly crushed under falling debris. Tails apprehends Kit after Kit's reservoir runs out of water, effectively leaving him powerless. As for Sonic and Surge, despite Surge's rage, fury, and electrical assault, Sonic keeps his cool and largely deals with Surge quite well eventually knocking her off the edge of a platform. Rather than accepting a helping hand up from Sonic, Surge seemingly falls to her death. So, after all the build-up, Surge kind of flopped against Sonic. Is it a disappointment as a reader? No, I think it's quite a cool narrative. Surge is propelled by hate and obsession, but she just couldn't get the job done. Her every thought revolves around Sonic and he has no idea who she is. To him, she's just a villain of the week to be beaten. I found it to be quite an interesting subversion of my expectations, and it leaves room for plenty of character development. Surge is gonna have to deal with that failure. She failed in her life's only real purpose. With Surge defeated, Sonic's final job is now to get out of the Eggperial City now that Eggman's back in control of his forces again. As of this video, the last issue to release was issue 51. It gave us confirmation that Surge did indeed survive her fall, and she's ready to regroup and take on Sonic again in the future. Sonic, Tails, Bell, and Kit tried to make a heady escape from the Eggperial City in one of Eggman's own vehicles before Metal Sonic obliterates it, 
sending it crashing down and leaving the issue on a cliffhanger, with the heroes once more surrounded by Eggman's forces. So far, that's all there is to Surge's story. I'm excited to continue getting my hands on future IDW issues to see where Ian Flynn and the other writers take the character. There's certainly a lot to work with here, and I'd love to hear your take on where you think Serge's character should go next. Will she end up finding out about her past? If so, what will that involve? Will she be able to best Sonic? Or perhaps, will she see the light of day and end up joining him like so many ex-antagonists? Will she end up helping Sonic in the very next issue? Will she survive as a long-term character, or will her fate be tragic? There's a lot to think about, and that ultimately is the great thing about Surge. One thing's for sure, the Sonic fanbase seem to adore Surge. There's so much cool fan art out there on the internet, and modders have already put Surge in a whole bunch of games. She's a massive success for IDW. And personally, I adore her too. And that's about it. Thanks for joining me. It was a lot of fun to talk about the IDW comics at length for the first time. I'd love to do more IDW videos intermingled with Fleetway and maybe even Archie stuff. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time.